Welcome to Tao of the Day, everybody. This is Martin John, and we are talking about the Tao Te Ching. The Tao Te Ching is an ancient text written about 600 BCE. That means um, that it is a long time ago, about, uh, about 3,000 years ago. And, and that's, a, that's, a, that's a long time. It's a long time to have a text out there. And, and one of the interesting things about looking at ancient texts and looking at old things in general, you know, one of the things that I like to do is watch old movies and see how people act and how people talked and how people, how, the differences between how people responded then to things as they respond to now. And when we look at a text that's 3,000 years old, we have to think about, I, I think one of the things that we can keep in mind is what was the consciousness of the people that were writing these things? And even though these, uh, this text has been translated many times, I think everybody who translates this text has, has good intentions of keeping the vibration of the text high in, in, the, uh, in, in, the best, uh, uh, in the in the best nature of how it was written. But when we look at these, we can really see some of the oldest uh, ways that we connect to ourselves. And so when I read the Tao, of course, today, our consciousness has shifted quite a bit from when it was written. Uh, but when it was written was a different time. And we are coming out of something that is core within us. So what I mean by all that is that we have been through many different types of evolution. One of those evolutions, which we are coming to an end of, is the evolution of utilizing the frontal lobe or utilizing logic and utilizing a, a, a way of looking at the world that's very masculine and, and very uh, closed off, maybe even to the whole of things. It's very focused on specifics. And so uh, Marcy is going to come up and we're going to talk, we're going to get a number from Marcy and talk about the Tao. Um, so yeah, so let's, let's see what the Tao has to offer. Good morning. Marcy. Good morning. Hi, how are you? I am well. It is, it is, it is late morning for you. It is. Well, I woke up about six o'clock and then, uh, got Luna on the bus at seven and I went right back to bed cause I had a, a headache. It's been raining. Oh, is it raining? Well, not right now, but it has been, and the pressure still affects yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, I remember I, that that used to happen to me every now and again when it would rain. I would just get this pressure headache, just like like what? someone squeezing my head. Yes. <laughs> How have you been? Them. I've been well. I've been very well. Good, I've been good. well. Uh, uh, Andy's been here in Chicago. I'm going to be going to visit. Oh Andy, yay! Uh, week yeah just for a couple days we're gonna be we're gonna That's be doing awesome. a little celebrate um and so yeah so so um well i'm glad you're up how's your headache uh it's dissipating good i'm glad well we'll keep yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll 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 speak softly and we'll, we'll, <laughs> it'll be nice so do we have a number okay today? uh yes 15 15 Oh, this one I titled Ancient Tao. The ancient master's okay. ability to comprehend the mystery was so profound and subtle that they were often misunderstood. They could, one can only describe how they must have appeared. Careful as someone hearing the ice crack midway through crossing a lake, observant as someone surrounded by toxic threats, courteous as a guest in awe of her host, unpretentious as a felled branch in a wood, vacant as someone staring into space, and dull as a man with nothing to boast about. Can you be still, adding nothing until the mud settles, and it gives you the opportunity to see clearly? Can you be still until, on its own accord, the next action presents itself to you. The master has no need for herself. She doesn't seek or expect attention. Not needing to appease herself, she has no requests. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thoughts? 
<laughs> that, that all you need. <laughs> I I um I'm in a space right now where I am mentoring yeah. some young people who are very spiritual. Oh. And I find that I can learn from them too. Yes. A lot of times I just sit and I listen to them speak. No expectations. We don't have a chalkboard. I'm not telling them do this, do that. We're just in each other's presence at the time, usually all at once, sometimes one at a time, and I'm learning from them. Yeah. That's beautiful. Like, like how young are these people, if you don't mind me asking? Um, youngest is 20. Mm. Um, oldest is mid to late 30s. Okay. Well, this is beautiful. Like, like to mentor that, like, so that is a, that is a, you know, that's that next generation from us, you know, like we're, you know, we're like, I'm, I'm pushing 50, right? You're, 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 are you 50? Is that right? I don't want to, we don't have to talk about that, but I know <laughs> that for the Martin John. Yeah, we're going to drop <laughs> off that. Um, yeah. But, um, you know, like, and, and when we look at, when we look at, like younger people, they, they, you know, just like I was saying about the Tao, it's like, this was written 3000 years ago. Right. And, <clears throat> and it was written during a time that we had a different relationship to consciousness, that we were aware of different sorts of consciousness. And, and when we look at kids today that are 20, 30 years old, they have a different relationship to consciousness because there has been a lot of shifting in consciousness over the last 15, 20 years, yeah. you know? So, so they were born with a different, um, with a different relationship to consciousness than we were. And they have a different way of looking at things and, and their spirit brain, as I would say, we're moving into this space of the spirit brain while, while we sort of, step away from this logic brain, this frontal lobe brain that we, that we have, that you and I were really born into the height of the logic brain where everything was about school and everything was about yes. like plan it out and everything was about like, this is the way you do it. And now it's like, there is no Correct. way. Yes, correct. We, um, we have so much still to learn, Martin John, mm -hmm. for us to, to evolve. Yes. And I, I don't know if you've even ever spoken about Luna. Um, I used to think that she came here so that I could protect her. Yeah. And that she would be the next generation of people who to save the earth, not the world, the earth. Yeah. And thus saving all of us in the process. There's mm -hmm. so many children with this, this gift, I believe, to come in and heal everything. And she's been telling me for years, no, mommy, it's, it's the other way around. I'm protecting you. Yes. And I didn't see it. And I have to sit quietly now and understand that she believes I was put here, not just me, people like me and you, Martin John, were put here yeah. specifically for that reason, to heal everyone, and that those children coming are our protectors. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. It is beautiful. Yeah. It's overwhelming, and, and it humbles me. Mm -hmm. And I sit and I listen to her speak, and everything she speaks of is geared towards everything she talks about towards making me a better person, even though I'm nurturing her. Right. And I have to remind myself, she's got this fresh mentality. Yeah. And I kind of just let her do her thing mm -hmm. and I watch. And then I realize she's been watching me, my right. hand movements, my mouth, when I speak, my eyes, even my hair, I see her watching intently. And I'm beginning to learn from her to do that with other things. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. You know, as you're speaking, I'm just, I'm just like staring off at this, at this text and the, the, the section that I'm looking at is, can you be still adding nothing <laughs> until the mud settles, and it gives you the opportunity to see clearly. And can you be still until on its own accord, the next action presents itself to you? Like it's, it's faith. Yes. That is yes, like is. A of faith and like having faith in, in, and, and not, you know, and, and as you said, humble, right? It's, 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 it, yes. you can't, you can't express it. Like, like you can't, if you were to say, you know, if you were to try and, and consolidate all of your feelings into something that you can express, you would be cheating all of those feelings and just putting them in some sort of a box, all of your understanding and putting it in some sort of a box. But really it's so open and broad and it's like, you have to take a step back and not get, not get caught up in, in the explaining or understanding, but comprehending still. Wow. I feel like my heart has been in a box for years. Yeah. And every time I meet a person who I think was supposed to be here with me, I feel like there's chipping away, you know? Because it's not just a box, it's like a concrete box. Yeah. And Luna's been trying so hard to chip at it and and I I'm working at just being present for her. Yeah. Because she deserves that. And so do the rest of them, my other children, even my, my godchildren. Mm-hmm. You know, it's interesting, like you mentioned godchildren. I've, I've never been asked to be a godfather. And, and although that's fine, um, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not looking to be a godfather. Um, right. But, but as, a, as someone who is spiritual and someone who is raised Roman Catholic, like I think I could... <laughs> You know, I think I could very, you know, like I, I think I, it, it would be nice to be able to guide somebody spiritually and be, and be given that, given that mandate in, in some way, you know, like I do it anyway, but right. it's interesting you mentioned God children. Cause I'm like, oh yeah. Like, you know, I saw my God parents when I was a kid as someone who, who gave me gifts and came around and talked to me. They never really actually guided me spiritually in any way. But like, that's right. a, that's a big deal. Like, like even, even just if you're a godparent to be a parent to that person in a way that you can listen and you're not their parents so that you can be, you can be more, you, you can be okay. more of a God. What was that? Objective. Yeah. You can be more objective and you can be more still with them. You know, yeah. like you don't have to be, you don't have to be so concerned with what they're doing in school. You can be concerned in what they're doing internally. What an important role to play in someone's life, you know? And, mm-hmm. and, and I always, always, always looked at that role as being a very serious role. And that was a role that I never wanted to take on. You know, I, I never said no to anybody, but nobody ever asked me. So it was a, it's always an interesting mm-hmm. thing, you know, like, like, what like because i i don't know that i could agree with what i'd have to agree with in the church you know like like to to bring them closer to the specific god you know that the church would want but i could you know as a spiritual guide like allow that child that space that objective space to explore their own spirituality and their own purpose and their own I, role. I, it's just so funny martin john i love the church yeah. I was raised Catholic. I love the church. And I still won't push it on anyone. It's yeah. for me. Mm-hmm. You know, I and I have a lot of friends who are Christian and Mormon and and they're always talking about, oh, when you come here we'll go to church and I'm I'm okay. But just to listen. Yeah. You know, and 
but I know how it goes. I've been to so many where they, oh, are you going to come back? And they try to push it on you. No. No. Yeah, I no. can't. I can't. I got it's my just... relationship with God. Like, I remember when I went to Spain, I went to, uh, I went to Santiago de Compostela and I went to the, to the cathedral in Santiago, the, the main cathedral where St. James is buried. His, his body lays in rest there. And, and I, and I, and I did confession there. And, and when I did confession, I was, you know, uh, we were, I was talking to the priest and, and we were talking about this idea of like, you know, I have my own relationship with God, you know, and, and it's, it's fallen away from the church and, and the priest uh, who, you know, I and mean, this is a pretty important church, right? Like in, mm -hmm. in all, all in all. And, and he was like, you know, that's, what's important. He's like, it doesn't matter that you go to mass, but it does matter that you pray and, and that your spiritual connection with God is one that is healthy. And I, it was, it just gave me so much freedom because here's this like pretty important priest because he is mm -hmm. at this church, right? Telling me that like my way of praying is, is good, you know, even though I'm exploring other things. And, and he was so, it was just so just good to hear that, you know, that my stillness Yes, was, was 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 seen was seen in the church. Thank you again for everything, Martin John. Um, this was uh, what I needed. Oh, good. I'm glad. Yes, it seems, it seems to fall into place. Always, always. always. It's uh, that's And thank you for for being a mentor to young people because that's. Uh, that's needed. And I think you, 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 you're a good mentor. Thank you. Absolutely. You too. Mm, thank All you. Right. I'm out. Give my love right. to Andy and I love you and I'll speak with you soon. All right. Ciao. Bye. Bye. Josh is coming up. Joshua, how are you doing? Martin John, I'm great. How are you doing? I am doing very well. I heard just chatting with, with Julie after she <laughs> and I spoke this morning. It was very nice. Yeah. Thank you so much for for the Captain Dan reference. It was very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Glad you liked that one. I, I, I mentioned later, I'm like, I'm not sure how it's received. So Yeah, I've like heard that. And I, I don't I you know, I don't I I I I I don't know the movie very well, to be quite mm -hmm. honest. And it's funny, Andy like uh, worked for Bubba Gum Shrimp Company, so she knows everything about the movie. So I'll I'll just run it by her. <laughs> wow. Uh, wow. So um, so yeah, so that's so it's interesting. I don't I don't know much about the movie, and I don't I know I've seen it. I'm not. I have seen it like once. Uh, I I can't say that I'm a big fan of it, but I don't mm -hmm. recall. I don't recall characters in it and things. So. But mm. but I, I appreciate, you know, like if 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 <laughs> anything that I am inspires someone to think of something that and you 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 spoke of it so fondly. So I, I would I, I, I take it. I take it with um, that, that it that it came with uh, with love and respect. So, yeah, yeah, it did. There's uh, the inspiration that you just that you just cited uh, was really is really embodied by the uh, scene of the movie that. I was thinking of, which was related to what you had been talking about previously with Ellen. Oh, so. well, that's beautiful. Well, I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad. Yeah. So, um, so here we are, down with the day. Yeah. Do you have yeah. a number between one and eighty-one? Oh my gosh, do you have a number that never gets called? Probably. Um, I could do that research, but um, hard to hard to uh hard to pull that one out uh because you know i look at them and as soon as i start reading it i'm like yeah i've, I've read that one recently it's it's always it's always you know something I'm, i don't i don't something. know offhand there is there is a couple i don't know which numbers they are there's there are a couple that i'm like oh yeah that one is one is there a, called. is there a zero there is not a zero Unless we go zero to eighty, and we just jerk all the numbers <laughs> one back. <laughs> Typewriter, click it off to the side. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> uh, let's go with one. Go with one. One is a beautiful, uh, beautiful start, and I like one especially because you know. So I wrote, 
a translation I wrote, I recently finished writing uh, a rendition of the Tao and, and going cool. through it one at a time, right. Yeah. has been, has been, has given me a new understanding of why it was written the way it was and how it was written and where the numbers kind of fall and, 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 and how it builds. It's actually, you know, like, um, it, it, one builds off the next, builds off the next. And so one is where we start. There's, there's no history. You have no rec you don't know what Tao is. And you start with this empty mind of like all things. Now, now what does it say? And so number one, I titled expressing Tao. Words are particular. They cannot express Tao. To have a name is to be limited to the manifestation. That which is nameless is the source of manifestation. Self-referential, those who name, name themselves. Want to express the depth of the mystery? Stop identifying. Want to express the shallowness of manifestation? Differentiate. Either way, no one can tell. The difference is in your experience. So what we have here is this is the first, this is our first introduction to what Tao is and mentions Tao once in the beginning, which is words are particular, they cannot express Tao. What are your thoughts? Mm -hmm. There exists among all ideas an internal continuum that makes up the overall texture of the thing that you're describing, I right. think I can say generally. Yeah. And so within the context of existence, there is the greater whole and the need to individualize distinctly from that greater whole. And within each layer, um, you know, when you talk about manifestation, when you talk about, I mean, these two different layers of being and non-being of um, whichever the thing was, one needs discernment and the other needs differentiation. They're both, it's all ways to, in my mind, ways to wrangle um, duality with non-duality. Right. Yeah. And, and contextualize self in space and discover equilibrium at the in at the level of individuation right i i mean i i i think that that's a beautiful way of putting it right words are particular meaning that they mean certain things mm -hmm. but they so they cannot express Tao, and yet we find out later that Tao is in all things so even yeah. the lamp, even the lamp has Tao mm -hmm. within it and has a purpose, and yet we call it lamp, and yet and and then put it in a box of our understanding of what a lamp is, and we do that with each other too. We say this. Did you know, Go on. Did you know that um, Shem means word in Hebrew, which is where you get the the term Shema, or the prayer and um hashem one of the words for god means the word so words are super holy and whatever you whatever you label whatever you recognize whatever you individualize and respect as as the thing that appears before you that is your burning bush so to speak at the yeah. metaphysical level right so deep down like and and that's an important thing, right? So, so in this being the first Tao, the first line of Tao is like, yeah. no matter what we read here, it is not it, mm -hmm. right? You can't, you cannot, the, the first line of the entire Tao Te Ching is words are particular, they cannot express Tao. So everything you read here it's is not It's an interesting not duality. It. Yeah, it's an interesting mm -hmm. duality because it means that words are really important, but they're not what you're looking for. Right. 
they're at best a really good variable. Right. They're just a straw dog for everything that you're actually experiencing. Yeah. And, and so what moves on is to have a name is to be limited to the manifestation. Mm -hmm. That which is nameless is the source of manifestation. So as soon mm -hmm. as you start to differentiate, as soon as you start to be particular about something, as soon as you start to separate, then you say, this is this, and this is this, and I'm making names for all these things. Right. I understand all of these things as specific things. I am limiting it to the manifestation. I'm limiting it to what I can understand. Like the um, the atheist scientist who becomes more spiritual as he gets older. Right. Like, uh, like Einstein. Because they start to understand that it's not just what I can exp I, I can understand. It is. It is, yeah. it is deeper than that. It is more than that. Right. And this next right. line is really interesting. And I really, I really appreciate this next line is self referential. Those who name name themselves. So we already <laughs> know that to name something is to limit it to manifestation. And if you name all of these things around you, you will name yourself limiting your scope, putting yourself in a box of manifestation. And that's where you find that atheist scientist. And then he starts to get out of that box as he realizes, wait, I'm not just my name. I'm not just how I labeled myself. And all the lines that hold the structures of identity begin to blur. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Like, uh -huh. because we, because we, because we have to get rid of the name of the things, right? Like we say God and God is a specific thing or whatever. And, 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 but it's like, it's bigger than that. It's not God. It's not Tao. It's not Yahweh. It's not, it's, it's bigger than that. It's not the word. Mm -hmm. Yes. The word is holy and we can, we could call on the word, but that still doesn't call on the greatness of all things. Words and, are at best to stand in. Right. And it's fine mm -hmm. to use words. It's not bad to use words. It's fine to use words. And we have different experiences when we are in the mystery and we have different experiences when we're in the manifestation, which is what these next two lines express. When to ex when want to experience the depth of mystery, stop identifying. Want to experience the shallowness of manifestation, differentiate. There's nothing wrong with being in the shallowness of manifestation. There's nothing wrong with eating a beautiful steak and being like, oh my God, this is so delicious, da, 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 da. But mm -hmm. as soon as we stop identifying that this steak is delicious, we're in the mystery and we can stop identifying, but we can do either one. And the next line being either way, no one can tell the differences in your experience. What do you want to experience? Do you want to experience that steak, which is going to be gone when you're done with it? Because if you do, then experience it, love it, enjoy it, you know, go with it. Do you want to experience the, the depth and you can change from one day to the next. You can say today, I want to experience the steak tomorrow. I want to experience the dull, the dull nature where everything is one and there is no differentiation and both of those are okay, but recognize that the words that we use are the things that are particular, not the steak. The steak isn't particular. The fact that we differentiate it as a steak makes it particular. What's coming up for me is the ageless wisdom of Joseph Campbell. If you feel like you're falling, dive. And the reason I get to if you feel like you're falling, dive is because some people in this life of their spiritual development in a larger story of being and becoming are in this life to experience for example mercury retrograde which is an externalized projection of um it's an outwardly focused manifestation because of the the disorientation of the perspective from earth versus mm -hmm. and so and some people don't have mercury retrograde for example so there's different ways of individualizing that experience and some people are really here to over identify with the idea that uh, the with over identify with a label on right. some things 
and that's part of what they're here to learn and grow into and develop and um, experience as consciousness knows itself better through them over time right or in in each moment really so yeah it it's has it's 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 hard for me to go black and white like yeah don't over identify or don't don't like label and don't like feel comfort from having labeled a thing as a this or a that but to allow yourself maybe to allow oneself to allow myself to indulge in the capacity of consciousness to individualize through you and experience experience its own experience the consciousness of itself through you and what unique what unique qualities of comfort do you or understanding do you get that allows you to um but also stay soft and allow lines to be blurred like we're talking about um because like over identifying and getting too comfortable in any reality as the ultimate reality like sure that's a pencil but like as soon as it's not a pencil it's you know it's shavings or it's firewood so like you know that's kind of a weird example but everything yeah, i get it yeah it's transmutable yeah and and it's um, bigger you know it's bigger than all that it's bigger than mm-hmm. you know and and here although it could seem like there is a better here you know to have a name is to be limited to manifestation but that's okay like like it's it's still beautiful it's still like there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with experiencing the shallowness of manifestation yes it is shallow and that's okay these aren't mm-hmm. these aren't things like if you want to do that you can all you have to do is differentiate differentiate you from everybody else and your experience from the last experience from the last moment or you can allow it to be a fluid thing which will rob you to some degree of emotion rob you of excitement rob you of sadness rob you of deep pain and all of these things Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. holding the duality and experiencing all right you dropped off i got kelly on but if you wanted to come back and uh finish that i would love for you to do that i'll give you a couple seconds to join back in And there you are, Kelly, I'm going to get to you in a moment. Okay, go ahead. You there? Yep. Hey, thank you. Um, Yeah, so I guess the best way to sum that up is with a story, a quick story, if I may, um, that is like, imagine in, in old days, somebody fell down a well and say it's you know 40 feet to the bottom of this well and you realize that you're you know you're you're just fine somehow miraculously you're, you're completely saved um you're physically physically fit but you uh you're stuck down this well and there's you know nobody can hear you from that far down so you have to you know climb out and fortunately there's plenty of rocks um and you feel comfortable with your climbing skills uh in this story and so you like you feel like you have to climb out and for and 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 it's really bright that day so you can see the sunlight at the top and so you know where you're going you know the bigger picture of where you're going always focused on climbing through the light at the end of the tunnel but if you lose awareness of what you're holding on to if you lose awareness of your handholds of your footholds on these rocks as you're scaling this 40 foot hall 40 foot tall pipe essentially you might fall back down and um and lose your grip and you know lose your grip and fall and so um you know have to do the whole thing over again Um, yeah you know if you if you if you get yourself locked into the idea of the manifestation and if you believe that is the truth you'll get fooled by it right holding on you get fooled fooled as as if as, as if that is the extent of what life is right 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 exactly yeah and you can there's nothing wrong with that but you can believe that that's everything and it's not it's a polyphasic reality (laughs) yeah (laughs) well all right joshua thank you so much much. great time i have to take care bye-bye oh kelly 
All right. Well, Kelly dropped off. I'm going to see if Kelly can come back up. Um, if she can, wonderful. Oh, I got an applause from Kelly, so I know she's there. You're not in my queue. Can you come back? I don't know if uh, up oh, there is somebody there and it is Kelly I'm so glad good Kelly that's, hi that's some heavy stuff you guys went through I'm like yeah <laughs> I felt like I was in a philosophy class in like grad school <laughs> <laughs> oh how have you been I mean, you know, it's, uh, well, well, pretty good, pretty good. Yeah. 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 Well, Just this, I, okay. this particular week was a little tiring, but okay. what were you saying? How, how, how are the kids? The kids are, everybody's good. I mean, you know, when you put it like that, that simple sentence, everybody's good. It, it's definitely just doing our, our like daily wave of life, ups and downs. Everybody's yeah. with them. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Um, <laughs> let's see what the Dow has for you today. I will tell you before that part that we are having a birthday party at my house that I haven't done any decoration, any cleaning, or any cleaning for. Is it your this birthday? This afternoon. No, my youngest. So oh. I'm a little bit like, okay, this is the very last minute. What can I do? <laughs> yeah. What, is there a theme? Yes. Uh, dinosaurs. We were gonna do something always to dinosaurs. I don't know. Every time I talk to some, dinosaurs, are the theme. Uh, kids, it's at age, yeah. Kids. <sighs> well, dinosaurs are, are an easy one, I think. How about eighty one today? Eighty one. We're going all the way to the bottom. So this one is called blossoming leader. It's funny because I think of it as the top. Oh yeah. <laughs> I can see that. I can see that as well. Okay. True words may not sound comforting, yet comfort those they are meant for. However, comforting words are never true. Connected to source, there is no desire to prove. Desire to prove only exposes separation from source. The master's possessions are not part of the manifestation. Giving away her possessions, she only receives more. Tao blesses everyone in this way. When this blessing can be received, domination and power will yield, while all people will blossom as leaders. And you are muted. <laughs> Sorry. No. What is this? What is where are broken, we? broken window? Oh. Trying to roll it up so you could hear me, and then I couldn't unmute. Yeah. Oh. Manifestations like You're this having particular car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So 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 we're gonna we'll go through this we'll go through this together really briefly. Um. So true words may not sound comforting, yet comfort those they are meant for. However, comforting words are never true. How do you understand that? Mm. Th that sometimes we comfort to to like ease a situation, but we'll say things that we don't actually believe, yeah. either to others, to ourselves, or you know, for whatever reason, we're doing something to like alleviate that moment experience, but therefore it's kind of denying that moment in the process we tend i i personally do this all the time i was talking about this other day to somebody but being honest is is sometimes really difficult because i i just want to uh sugarcoat it i just want to i just want to like, hug it out with you instead of tell the truth if you know it's it, it's weird because i do want to tell the truth but i'm also like i don't know like is there a better way for me to phrase this to make it gentler and and in there you know you also find yourself not being able to receive honesty when you do when you're a person who tends to do that and you probably don't yeah. notice it yeah you know and i like that it's like true words may not sound comforting get comfort those they are meant for mm -hmm. you know, even if it's uncomfortable like even if it's like even if it's like 
disturbing a little bit. There's still comfort in there. Have you, I mean, I know I felt that way before where it's like, oh, I'm really pissed that someone said something. But really, after a little time of thinking about it, I'm like, oh, no, actually, that that's really good for me to know. You know, <clears throat> a really funny example of this is when I was uh, 20 and pregnant and I had gained a lot of weight really, really quickly. And my friend, she is still my friend to this day, and I had met her at work um, where I was working, just was like making a really big deal out of how big my butt got. Cause I yeah. just, I'm like, at the, you know, like anybody else would have said something about it, but she was just like, girl, you got to stop eating those brownies. And like, but she was being not mean. Like she was being, it wasn't like honest. she was being, she was being honest, yeah. not yeah. judging. Right? And I and I love her forever because if other people could say something, but they would, they could say even the same thing and it would be totally different. But like her honesty and like her just telling me how it is, but I know she's saying it with love and not judgment, it creates like this, this more comfort and safety and a bond that, you know, doesn't go away. Yeah. You know, and this is where this next line I think comes in. Connected to source, there's no desire to prove desire to prove only exposes separation from source. And that's this idea of like, you know, your friend wasn't trying to prove she was a friend. She was just being honest. Yeah. You know, when we try to prove that we're nice, when we try to prove that we're a certain kind of person, when we try and prove that, you know, we're tough, when we try and prove and, and that trying to prove gets us to, you know, not, necessarily say true words it's disconnecting for sure that meaning so, it exposes the separation from source because we don't have anything to prove the master's possessions are not part of the manifestation giving away her possessions she only receives more and as that, you know, as we, you know, what are your possessions? Your possessions are your observations or your, pos your possessions are your truth. Mm, I was making them physical. Right. Because that's the, the master's possessions are not part of the manifestation. Physical possessions are part of the manifestation, but that's not what the master has possessed. And if you have something physical, the more you give it away, the more you give of yourself. But if you are the source of your possessions, the, the more you give it away, the more you receive. Yes. That's the best line. Yeah. That's so good. Also, sometimes I think our physical possessions, you know, people who have some abundance of something or have it in order to try to gain, you know, affirmations from others, they can give that away all it, it, that that thing in the Bible, that story about like that old lady who gave her one coin and everybody else was giving like piles of money or whatever. And hers was worth more like it's it can be a distraction from what we're also. You know, it's, it's comforting. It's like the blanket. It's like hiding behind. Does that make sense? What I'm trying to say? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's like that 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 coin, that little bit of money is so much means so much more to that person than the piles of money you know we look at you know we, we can look at like you know the richest people in the world and it's like they gave a million dollars to charity and it's like yeah mm -hmm. i gave i gave a hundred dollars to charity and the percentage of my income that that came from versus the percentage of income that million dollars came from is very different yes you know yes and so, like, which is actually more valuable? You know, sure, yes. you can buy more with that $100, but that $100 took more from me. You know, it, in there lies, like, this thing about also valuing ourselves, like, our time. Like, there's a lot of external experiences that at least I see experience to devalue oneself, to devalue our time. Like, so it's even in looking at that little story and from this line here, like my time is valuable. And when I, when I, you know, when I see like, how am I spending it? How am I, how am I using, where, what am I putting my focus on? You know, right. this, 
it's it's in my head, but I can't get the words out. I guess. Yeah. Maybe. No, I, I I understand. And as this as this one wraps up, Dow blesses everyone in this way, by being able to like if you give away your possessions, that which you are, you only receive more. When this blessing can be received, meaning that you can speak truth and you can and you can allow those words to exist in the world, meaning you can connect to source without a desire to prove anything of yourself. When this blessing can be received, domination and power will yield while all people will blossom as leaders. Like you will no longer need to dominate. You will no longer need to have power over others. You will no longer need to, to benefit, you know, materialistically because your possessions are you. Yeah, that's the total, like the total peace and the experience. Yeah. Total like presence of it and just like being in gratitude and being at like peace center. Yeah, and it's not easy to do. No. And you know, like speaking on that, meditation, people I remember they used to really stress me out that word because I couldn't understand the silence in the mind or whatever you're supposed to do. But just having, you can be in meditative state, I, I think, because I think there's different ways to go about it. Like right here now, like just listening to you talk and allowing the phrase or the line to just sort of settle in and allow myself to hear what comes forth from that. Like, you know, it's, I just wanted to throw that out there because it definitely balanced me just now a little bit more. So yeah. it, just to get my head, in a place that I actually want to, where I can clear it out and just allow something, a meaning to come forward. Right. Hmm. Yeah. That's good. And this right? is, this is, yeah, this is a good one, you know, like, and then all people will blossom as leaders. Like if you can just be there without trying to dominate, without trying to be powerful, without it, by just being yourself, being honest, speaking from your heart, then everyone around you will, will blossom as leaders. They will be inspired by that, which you are experiencing and which they experience through you. And I was talking to uh, Marcy earlier and she was saying that Luna, her daughter was like, you know, observing her. And in that observing Luna's learning, Luna's learning how to be a leader because she is able to present truth because she is able to present that, that space without possession. I, oh, hey Joshua. I, um, <clears throat> that's my favorite line of all. Like, it's such a great way for the author, whichever one we're reading, to finish because, like, the, all people to blossom into, like, leaders. It's one of my favorite things is that we, any teacher, any person that you're looking to, they're, they're only there just to sort of mirror the, the, the leader inside of you to help you find and connect and become the leader that you are. Like we all should be our own leader. That's and right. That's just absolute for me. Yeah. It's not like they're leading others. They blossom mm -hmm. as leaders of themselves. Yeah. And because like, while all people blossom as leaders, like, well, wait a minute. Well, then who's going to lead? Are they going to compete against each other? No, because domination and power will yield while all people will yeah. blossom as leaders. And then you just lead in this moment. And then you follow and you be here and you're present with yourself. Because the leader doesn't need to compete with the other leaders. Right. The leader doesn't have to lead anybody. Yeah. You know, like that's what I think a lot of our world tries to make us believe is that idea that like, if you, you can't be a leader, if you don't have followers and it's like, no, you just, you just, right. I know this whole, and then you see it every, like everywhere. I've done a little tiny rant on this app about that once because follow for follow followers, like how many followers, like that word, no, like, no. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. This is beautiful. Thank you. I'm glad you're on today. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, I think I was on all week, but I think I've been on earlier. I like to try and I, I like to do a 10 a.m. one usually just to, to get my 
to get my Pacific people and my, my mountain people, like give them a chance to get up. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I love you. Have a great day. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll be in touch. Yes. Ready. All right. You too. I'm going to bring Dr. Rao on and then we're going to close it out for the day. I only have a couple more hours before I got to take, uh, take Andy out to the airport. So we're going to, we're going to say hi to Dr. Rao. How are you doing, doctor? Hello, Martin. How are you? I am well. I am well. Very good. Very good. So what's going on? I just came to oh. say hello to you. <laughs> oh, yes. I am. I am doing very well. We're moving into the weekend. I'm, I'm, I'm just been reading a couple of these DAOs and, and it was really nice today. We, we had, a, we had, we talked about the first uh, chapter and the last chapter and we, you know, it was really nice to be able to talk about the idea that, you know, words are are particular but it's like what is inside of us that's that that that's truth right and then we come here with 81 and true words may not sound comforting yet comfort those they're meant for and so that's a really nice you know like when we when we can be honest you know like it just seems to land in the hearts of those they're meant for yeah yeah lot of chatter (laughs) Yes, lots of chatter. No real substance uh, behind that, you know, because yeah. uh, words can flow just like that, you know, without uh, really experiencing the spirit behind it or mm. the insight of uh, what you're talking about, you know. Yeah. When we don't have that kind of uh, uh, you know, involvement with it or experience with it, then that becomes uh, uh, just a chatter, just a noise, yeah. wind, wind blowing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when you say that, when you say words flow, it's it's almost like they're hypnotic. You can get hypnotized by words because they, they string together so beautifully or they string together in this way that, oh, that makes sense, I understand, and all of these things, and it's like, Eh, you know, maybe no, not. <laughs> that's okay if it is a yeah. poetic uh, language and then if it is something expressed the beautiful, that's all okay. But in the matters of the self and uh, really involving your inner essence, uh, how often do you touch that inner essence? Mm. That's the question, you know. Um, are you experiencing that essence all the time. Remember this quotation I always talk about, I would have told you before, your attention has always to be poised on the inner self. See? Yeah. Your attention has always to be poised on the inner self. The self being the Brahman or Tao, whatever yeah. term we use. But the thing is, when you are speaking or talking something, you may be expressing your opinion or your conclusion, your thing, right? But then then you are out of your attention on the self. Yeah. So that's why like chatter is like uh, taking you away from your real self rather than taking you inward. Mm-hmm. That's why silence is so important. Yeah. And then once you are established in the silence, something comes out of that silence is different. Something coming out of our scholarship, our shrewdness, our, um, you know, cleverness, or what, those are all the speech and that uh, comes out like the chatter. Because yeah. it doesn't have any impact on the self. The self is not coming. I remember uh, when uh, Ramana was reading uh, Gandhi's readings, uh, Gandhi used to publish a newsletter, right? And uh, he also published some books and all that. When he read them, he said, hey, this is not the political leader speaking. Right. This is the self speaking. Mm. So the question for us is, are we coming from the self or are we coming from the cultivated smaller self? 
you know we get hypnotized self hypnotized thinking that we are saying something very profound doesn't matter is right. that the re reality within you or not yes yeah yeah i, can I just see that. you know like yeah i just came to say hello to you martin that's all. yeah no it's always good to talk because i always really love that you you know you always encourage me to stay stay centered in that self and that's something that i've been you know like really focused you know quote unquote focused whatever word i can use to talk about that you know just yeah, like trying yeah. to, this to meditate another, in this moment whatever yeah, that this, is yeah this another challenge is we can get sucked into the other person talking from the mind but not from the self right you know that's the only thing we got to guard against otherwise we can get sucked in because we are trained in that um, mind for so many years right <laughs> so it can get activated just like that and we go there so sometimes it feels like uh, um, is he a wisdomer or is a non-wisdomer <laughs> you know yeah and then yeah. it's not like an evaluation but you can uh, feel it whether somebody is coming from the depths of their soul or they're talking from their high intellectual articulate and very impressive uh, hypnotizing speech right apparently this uh, this is what many people want if you are speaking uh, articulate clear and make uh, sense to their mind. Oh yeah, he's a good speaker. He does that and all that. But then if uh, that speaker is himself knows whether he is speaking from the superficial layers of his cultivated self or the deeper self, only he can know. We cannot judge him, you know, yeah. but then you can feel whether it is uh, from deep within or from the superficial self. And then we get caught in the, uh, superficial because we want to be nice we are to be you know friendly to people right <laughs> that's, yeah. that's the danger <laughs> you know it's funny because like in that in that first when we read the first verse like this was expressed where it's like do you want to express the depth of the, do you want to experience the depth of the mystery then stop identifying want to yeah. experience the shallowness of manifestation you differentiate either yeah. way no one can tell yeah. like you can experience like mm -hmm. and you can go ahead and experience the the manifestation and that's fine there's nothing wrong with that but you you want to get to a place where you understand the depth of the mystery of all the things yeah and there, in, in, there's in something that way, uh, you stop identifying there's something there that can interfere your own uh, um, staying in the self how it is is uh, i remember a story that uh, ramana Mahesh said to sadhu Ansadu, right? He, this man is a sadhu, is a uh, permanent staying at the ashram and he wants to pursue self realization. So he was uh, spending time uh, uh, discussing uh, and also projecting his thoughts and studying and coming and asking questions. So his uh, whole uh, endeavor was to self realize, right? So he's on that path, right? But then um, uh, very few people stayed in the ashram and most of the people came to visit the ashram just to you know they're interested they are curious about it uh, but they don't have the definition of serious uh, uh, self-inquiry or you know spiritual quest right that's okay yeah. right? but then um, this man was trying to be hospitable trying to be friendly and trying to be guiding them around the ashram but then when he is talking to them, he's going back to his normal um, mind, so to yes. say, right? But this spiritual quest was going beyond mind. So you are doing something serious, work all afternoon, evening, and then you are dragged into the small things in the morning. That's something like that. That was happening. Yeah. So yes. in as much as Ramana cared for the people who came to visit, and also cared for sadhu womb too but then he identified where sadhu womb is in terms of leaving uh, the worldly matters uh, as much as possible and staying in the ashram and embarking on that uh, quest for really self-realization right yeah. those kind of people are warned about 
wash out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, every time I come and talk to you, that's the only thing I'm talking about. Yes, I know, and I and I I, I appreciate your reminders, yeah. and and I'm yeah. always I'm always open to to. Yeah, you are. Yeah. yeah, you are. You are. But you know, even if somebody, one person like me, comes up and say, "Hey, Martin, are you remember the real self or the small self?" That it mean, it you, means so much for the reminder. Yeah. <laughs> that puts you back into the, your real quest, where your meaning is, where you are exploring, and all that. You know, that yeah. is really satsang. You know what is satsang mean? That is, sat means good people and good good uh, truth, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Sang means association. So you form a band of people that are involved in investigating what is truth, mm -hmm. right? In anything, right? And then there's another meaning is, what is yourself, deep core, that is really the truth? Because that is the only one that stays on, gives life, manifests life, and goes back. Uh, everything goes back into it, right? Yeah. If that is the one, basically Brahman or Tao, we are talking about. Mm -hmm. If that is the only truth, are you associated with that? Are you in sang with that? Are you in the committee or community of sang with that? So it's mm -hmm. not because too many people. It's just that there and you. Yeah. Are you being there or are you a separate person trying to be that? See, I hear that. that yeah. yeah. Remember that word, Martin. Satsang. Satsang. Yeah. See, my well, my understanding was so evolved over the years. Initially, I used to think, oh, it's a good people's association. We just go and hang around and talk about things and all that. That was okay, very early, very, very, as a kid yeah. probably. And then later on you understand, hey, there is a Brahman and we are a manifest of the Brahman. Everything manifested is Brahman too. Then everybody you see is also part of the Brahman and all that, right? Yeah. Then you understand that, then he says, but you are the Brahman, realize that. Associate yourself with that. Then you are in sang with it all the time or not. Mm. That's all. I let you go, and I will. Talk yes, about thank you so much. That's a lot for me to to sit yeah. with. To thank allow, you. I'm gonna allow that to all integrate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. You That's so much. what it is. Let it sink in and stay there, and don't pay attention to anything else. Then you'll be closer to that. Yes, yes. Thank you. Okay. Bye, Bye, Martin. Oh. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me. Marcy, Joshua, Kelly, and Dr. Rao. I appreciate you guys coming up and sharing uh, the Tao with me. Um, I have garbage men coming today, so I'm going to go ahead and shut this window just to make it a little quieter before I sign off. I appreciate everybody coming up and picking numbers, and I appreciate Dr. Rao always um, reminding me that uh, it is within me always, and that's where I should stay. It's always a, it's a good reminder. And I really appreciate that. And um, moving on, thank you so much once again. And uh, if you guys benefit from the work I do, definitely send a tip through uh, Venmo at Martin John underscore Garcia. You can also reach out to me and DM me over on Instagram at Martin John or Twitter or other locations as well. I don't check Twitter half as often as I check. Um, Instagram so you can catch me there. Uh, you can also uh, ask me a question here on Wisdom or write me a message. Uh, asking me a question um, will uh, be open to everybody while only the people that I follow and I don't follow a whole lot of people it should be said here on Wisdom but uh, if you wanted to get my attention you can ask me a question and, and then we can go ahead and message each other back and forth. Uh, if you request for me to follow you as well. Uh, so thank you so much for your attention. Uh, I'm Martin John, the Recovery Mentor. I always talk about what it means for us to recover ourselves. And when I look at what does it mean to recover ourselves, I mean, what? It, how can we recover to that deep self that we are, that Dr. Rao is talking about, that I talk about, with Brahman and Tao, and all of these wonderful uh, ancient ideas of who we are. So 
If you want to recover yourself, definitely reach out to me. And until next time, keep recovering yourself.